These macroeconomic charts will blow your mind. Let's dive right in. First, the electricity baseload futures in Europe are absolutely skyrocketing. This is France specifically. That is the December 22 future in orange. It tracks typically the spot price. So you could argue that the electricity price shock is priced to get much worse than today. And if you think that what's going on in Europe won't affect the United States or won't affect the globe, then you may just be wrong. Because if you check this chart out, in white, you can see the VIX. And in orange, you can see the euro currency volatility. So we know because there's raging inflation energy crisis going on in Europe, the currency is going to be very volatile. Well, look how well it tracks the VIX. This is a globally centrally planned economy. And so seeing future electricity crises in the dead of winter with natural gas and fuel shortages leading into an inflationary scare in Europe will absolutely have ripple effects. And so what we saw recently was UK inflation hitting an all-time high, and that did absolutely spook markets and spur a downturn. And so the sucker rally did come to a halt recently because the thought was that global inflation might be a bigger problem than people realize. And maybe peak inflation is going to not be as real as most people thought. Because just remember, the same people pushing the peak inflation narrative are the same people that push the inflation is transitory narrative. And so that's why we need to dig into this macroeconomic data to really understand what is going on and think for ourselves. This is the chart of CPI year on year, including average utility costs, gasoline, food at home, and electricity. The magnitude of this is something that people are just not talking enough about. The last time we reached inflationary levels anywhere near this, Paul Volcker had to raise interest rates to, to something close to 20% and absolutely crush the economy in the process. So yes, people are arguing for peak inflation. Yes, it is still possible. But this looks sticky. People are absolutely getting slammed because of this. And it's so significant that it does not appear to be something that can just magically fix itself with a nice peak and a nice soft landing. That is a monster, and it's going to take something monstrous to put an end to it, most likely. Now, remember, why is inflation so important? Well, it's probably the most important factor in the global economy because the Federal Reserve has to respond to it with interest rate decisions. Interest rates are the oxygen of the financial system. And so if inflation is high, those interest rates are going up. And we all know the US economy and the global economy is addicted to debt, cheap money, and cannot afford this. That's why we are seeing the US economy collapse, which we'll get into more. But first, this is what the peak inflationists are pointing to. U.S. retailers' inventories swell over course of pandemic. So they're looking at all the inventory buildup at Walmart, Home Depot, Target, Lowe's, and they're saying that this is going to help the CPI go down because retailers are going to have to lower the price of their goods, and that's just going to overall help inflation. That's just one metric people are looking at. But if you look at this chart, this shows change in credit card spending in blue, spiking right now. And it makes sense why people would be spending more money. The unemployment rate is extremely low. People are employed. People are still getting some cash flow. People are spending money right now. And so that might just offset those rises in inventories. Here's total non-farm employees you can just see pretty much reaching an all-time high. That dip on the far right chart is just showing how we crashed in the pandemic, but we have not seen a crash yet in unemployment. And so spending is still high, which is just going to add to the inflationary pressure, which again is worst case scenario for inflation to keep going up. So this chart absolutely blew my mind. This is showing in orange US year-over-year -year CPI which is a measure of inflation, S&P 500 year-over-year -year earning per share growth in blue. Those are lagging indicators. 
And then in black, you have the credit impulse, which is a leading indicator speaking to a weakening credit environment. And we know credit is all important. It's what caused the housing collapse when credit was low. Again, the economy is absolutely addicted to cheap debt. And when credit goes down, the entire house of cards falls. And so right now we are seeing an absolutely historic low in a leading indicator, the credit impulse. And so the thought is that that's going to bring the entire economy down with it. S&P 500 earnings are going to collapse. CPI will also collapse. The Federal Reserve wants to bring down inflation. They're hoping this tightening can cause inflation to collapse. But will it work? We just went through some charts that showed how sticky inflation very well may be. And so that is why this time is absolutely different. The Federal Reserve's tools are not as powerful as they used to be. They can't just print money and have inflation stay low. In this situation, if they print money, inflation is going to rise. And so the Federal Reserve absolutely has to keep their foot on the gas pedal, be hawkish, risk crashing markets, And so it is very likely that that is what is in store. We have this chart showing systematic positioning in U.S. equities. Obviously, if you're a contrarian investor, you want to fade the herd. You want to go against what the herd is doing because that is what the market manipulators do. They see the crowd rushing in one direction. They bet against them. The crowd all tries to leave out the exit at once and it causes a massive move in the opposite direction of the crowd as the crowd tries to escape that position. Well, right now, we have pretty bullish equity positioning. People are bullish. They saw that recent pump. We saw the meme traders and the meme stock retail crowds diving in, still thinking that this time, that it's still the status quo, that even though the Federal Reserve is hiking interest rates into a recession, that they can still buy these stocks absolutely not the case. And so if you're a contrarian investor and going against the market, this should excite you. Then you have this chart showing the most popular and crowded trades right now. And so in dark blue, you can see the August positioning and in in light blue, you can see the July positioning. And so in dark blue, you have the long US dollar, which is pretty consistent. So speaking to how conservative some of the bigger fund managers are, this is the Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey. But you, you're also seeing a big increase in long FANG stocks. So in dark blue, you can see a shift from July to August into long FANG stocks. This could be happening at the wrong time. You also have long cash, which is a conservative metric. People were bo- deeply bullish oil and commodities in July, but now they are not so much. And so obviously... It just speaks to where we may be headed, right? So what you're seeing is the retail crowds really chasing the pumping charts that we've seen recently. And you're seeing funds being a little more conservative, but also starting to chase these charts. It would absolutely not surprise me to see one last leg up in this sucker rally to bring everyone in before we get a rolling over. But we do have this chart, which is the VIX, the volatility index, which measures fear when it's low, It means people aren't afraid. And when it spikes, the market is absolutely afraid. And so it's very interesting. You can see the 50-day cycle, almost like clockwork. It it pumps every 50 days. And it just did a leg up. And so a lot of indicators are pointing to weakness ahead. The underlying fundamentals of this market are very weak. And so... The only hope anyone has of a sustained bull market rally is peak inflation. Obviously, the jury is still out. My absolute favorite positioning right now is a small hedge on my portfolio so that I can take advantage of the volatility when it happens. But I absolutely am not going to try to time this market or catch the falling knife because there's too many high quality assets out there to just leave up to chance. I will welcome an opportunity to buy some of these assets on the cheap. But in the meantime, I am absolutely hedging my portfolio. So that's just something I'm doing. Obviously, you guys tell me what you think is happening. But this is a scary setup. Seems like a vicious move is ahead. If I had to make a prediction, there might be one last leg up in this sucker rally before we do get a downturn, just to sucker in as many people as possible. But the fundamentals are weak. 
The inflation story is looking very scary and we will stay on top of this market. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Please consult a certified financial planner when making any decisions about investing. And do your own research before making any decisions. Investments are risky and you can lose lots of money in them.